Well, sometimes they don't able. My stepdad used to abuse me all the time if I didn't do something he wanted or something like that. Okay. I and I would send my girlfriend photos of the bruises and wear marks and all that. And any time he didn't get his way, he would hold me. He hit you in your dick. Yeah. How did he hit you in your dick? He grabbed me on the hill and he punched me in white. Um, he hit me in white in the dick when he grabbed me in the shoulder. Okay. That day, um, that morning, then he put his gun to my head. Okay. And tried to. Make me do what it's gay. What he tried to make me do. He tried to make me. Sham. Dan did. Yeah, because mom wanted to do it anymore. Huh? I said because mom wanted to do it anymore. What mom wouldn't do it anymore? Yeah, cause him that with that. And he tried to do that, and I lost it. Okay. Who all was there when that happened? Yeah, okay. okay. Where did you shoot Dan on his body? His head. In the front or the back? Uh, shot. The shot? Shot. Mom, back. Everybody was back of the head. So you shot Dan in the side of the head. You remember which side? No, I did not. Okay. I don't know which side. You shot Mom in the back of the head? Mm-hmm. What was Mom doing when you shot her? Sleep. She was asleep on her, was she laying on her front? Or? Oh, yeah, she was laying on the front. What about Gavin? Uh, Gage. Gage, I'm sorry. Uh, he was standing up. Standing when, up? When I shot him. What was he doing? Checking on guys gun sound at the gun sound. I just like that. The boy you see here is Gavin Smith, a 16 year old who has been arrested on suspicion of murdering his whole family. On December 9, 2020, he shot four of his family members in the head. The victims include his stepfather, Dan, 37, his biological mother, Risa, 39, his stepbrother, Gage, 13, and the youngest step sibling, Jameson, 3. After committing these heinous crimes, he cycled his way to his girlfriend Rebecca, 17. She was not only the motivation behind these crimes, but also his accomplice. After the events, she also provided him with shelter until he was caught. The police were informed on December 13, 2020, when Timothy Saunders, grandfather of Gavin and father of Risa Saunders, visited their home in Cemetery Hill Road, Charleston. He had been unable to get in contact with the family since December 8th, 2020. What he saw completely devastated him. He found the dead bodies of his daughter Risa, her husband, and two of his grandchildren, but Gavin was missing from the scene. Gavin was then arrested at Rebecca's home and taken to the Kanawha County Sheriff's Office for further questioning. Hey, did you eat already? Uh, no. no. You didn't wait on me, did you? Yeah. <laughs> I just got it. I know. I don't really like Wendy's bodies. Oh, uh, you don't? No. If you guys want, you can have it. Oh, no, I'm good. I got one of them four for four things. Same so thing. There's this guy that we work with in our office. That's all he'll eat. He's four for fours when we go to Wendy's. They're good. That's pretty good. What'd you get, the ginger bacon or the crispy chicken? Uh, ginger bacon. That's what I got. <laughs> well, we have the same taste. Mm-hmm. He's on a diet, so he just eats Cheetos. I can tell. <laughs> he needs to get on a new one, doesn't he? Yeah. So you say you're in the ninth grade? Mm-hmm. How's all this e-learning stuff going? Um, quite difficult. <laughs> Because I'm used to going to school and doing it in class, not in college. Okay. You a t- you a Hoover? Mm-hmm. Where are you going? Yeah. I mean, just COVID and stuff would won't happen. I'll be having good grades and all that, but I'm having bad. Um, Y'all used to get good grades. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so have you done the virtual learning the whole year, or are you just doing the? I've been there about e learning. Since beginning of the year. The whole time? Yeah, since COVID started. Okay, so you've been doing it all year. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of high school kids that are wanting to not go to school and just want to do it from home. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand why they want to shut the schools down. Every day there's a kid getting COVID. Right. 
That's the way it's looking. That's the way it's going. These cases keep going up. Mm -hmm. What'd you get to drink? Coke. Damn, we got the same order. I think you did. When the detectives enter, they break the awkwardness and hostility in the environment by first building a rapport with Gavin. They offer Gavin food and try to lighten the mood with subtle humor. They want to reassure him that even though he's being questioned, he will not be coerced. An important thing to note is that regardless of how extreme the crimes are, Gavin is still only 16 years old. And though he's the one who killed his own family, he has just become an orphan. He is showing visible signs of anxiety, like swearing and trying to avoid eye contact. But as soon as the detectives realize this, they try to keep him at ease by making jokes and asking about more general things in his life, like school. Gavin, yeah, a lot of times we work a lot of these type cases where you have a kind of a toxic home life. You know what that means? Like it's just yeah, I get. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we and we and we deal with a lot of families that um, that the parents mistreat the children and. Um, there's domestic violence in the home, child maltreatment, right. child sexual abuse, child abuse. There's all types of different things that we deal with, okay? Yes. We understand that. And then talking to your girlfriend, a couple of our detectives have talked to our girlfriend, and she, she's she's told them um, what all. What's been going on. What, what, what's been going on. And um, she obviously you told her what happened up there, right? Yeah. Uh, what, at, yeah. In the house. Huh? I've seen all that. Yeah. Well, and, and what else happened with your family up there that, that, that has died, okay? The detectives open the interrogation on the right foot by empathizing with him instead of threatening Gavin or warning him of the consequences of noncompliance. They're trying to make him open up by showing him that they are on his side and want to know his perspective. By mentioning that they already have some information from Rebecca, they're trying to build subtle pressure on him. When Gavin hears this, he is taken aback because he had already decided what to tell the police but this obstructs the flow he'd expected the interrogation to go in. When he came in, in his mind, the plan was to share the details he had planned out, but he does not seem to realize that this is how things will happen. Uh, Dad, I don't know, but I know about the because I, huh? I said I didn't know about the decision, but I know about the business because that's what they used to do you know, all the time. Okay, well, like I said, you're, you go, just go ahead and tell us about that. Tell us about all of that. Well... Do you want me to start from the beginning? Yeah, just start from the beginning here. Well, sometimes down April, my stepdad used to abuse me all the time if I didn't do something he wanted or something like that. I, okay. And I would send my girlfriend photos of the uh, bruises and wear marks and all that. And any time he didn't get his way, he would help me. And oh, yeah. so would my mom. Like, she punched me in the mouth a couple times because I didn't do what she wanted. Like... Okay. Well, I don't know what it was, but they would have me every time I didn't want to do something that I shouldn't have done. Okay. So, first of all, who all lives in your house? How old are you? You're 16? 16, 16. What's your date of birth? Zero five, wait, five, five, seventeen, oh five. Five, seventeen, oh five. I uh, know, oh five. Oh four? Okay. <laughs> and, if I, and if I say something that, that's wrong, if you're not wrong or correcting me, okay? All right. All right. So, um, who all lives at the house with you? My mom, my stepdad, my baby brother, and my young brother. Okay, what are all their names? Dave is the youngest. Well, not the youngest, uh, young brother. James is the baby. Uh, Dan is the stepdad, and mom is the Lisa. Okay. All I, I say. I can't pronounce how it's hard. Your mom's name's what? Lisa, with the R. Risa? Yeah. Risa? I can't pronounce it. Okay, gotcha. Um. At this point, Gavin claims that he does not know about the shootings, even though he's been told that Rebecca already told him the truth. However, he takes this as an opportunity to lay the groundwork for the possible motive behind the killings. He says that he had regularly been physically abused, both by his mother, Risa, and his stepdad, Dan. To what extent Gavin had been abused is still up for debate. However, from the beginning, there are signs of neglect. You may have noticed that Gavin's speech is compromised. He has speech impediments called rhoticism and lambdicism. 
He is currently 16 years old, and the fact that he has never been put in contact with a speech therapist by his parents or teachers in school is a clear indicator of missing a responsible adult figure in his life. Another very interesting observation that can be made here is that he is talking about his family in present tense when he knows he left them dead a few days ago. So how old are your brothers? 11, 3, Gage is 11, and Jameson is 3. Jameson is three. That's your okay. And are they your two bloodlines? They're your biological brothers. They're not like your half brothers or step brothers or anything like that. Yeah, they're by definite dads. Okay, but it's, they're all three. You all, your mom's kids. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So when did stepdad come into the picture? When did he? Well, when I started sex grade, began sex grade. Okay. And you began sex grades when your stepdad. I when did he start? When did he meet your mom? Or when did they get married? Uh, they got married somewhere in June, June or July. Of when? Last year. Of last year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Had they been together before that? Uh, they've been together since 2016. Since 2016? Yeah, since I got in sixth grade. Okay. Gavin, Gage, and Jameson, all three boys had different fathers and the same mother, Risa. Gavin talks very casually about this, but the normalcy in his tone indicates how unstable the household has been for the children. Apart from that, you can also notice how inconsistent Gavin is with his confession. Within a few minutes, he stated that the abuse began in 2016, and then after a few minutes, he said that it started in April 2020. Gavin will continue to lie throughout the interrogation. He shows many similarities to a pathological liar. Some of these are, one, providing extensive details, Two, adding dramatic and slightly unbelievable stories. Three, looking anxious while talking. Four, constantly changing the story or being vague when asked about the details. Five, unconcerned about being caught in a lie. Six, acting in ways that don't match their words. Gavin has projected all these signs in the interrogation. Though one can argue that he's lying in the situation to get himself out of trouble, the composure he maintains and the confidence with which he lies says otherwise. Interestingly, according to a study published in Psychiatric Research and Practice, signs of being a pathological liar begin to show between the ages of 10 to 20 years. And what was going on? Well, we had a lot of family problems. Like, my aunt, she has cancer down in her area and on our, like a normal cancer, yeah. Except it's a very well kind of one, and we've been just dealing with that a lot. And my grandmother passed away in 2013, and Dan started blaming me for her death and all that, saying I was the one who gave it to her, and, which you can't give her cancer. Right. And it just been by them and I... I understand. Does he mean to your brothers, too? No, it was only me. Why is that? I wish I knew. Because I take care of Jameson all the time. Like, they... He calls me daddy, which is a bad thing, since I'm his oldest brother. Because I've been taking care of him since day one, since he got out of the hospital. Mm-hmm. It's just been hard. Immediately after, he comes up with more inconsistencies, saying that his stepfather, Dan, blamed the death of his grandmother on him. She died in 2013, while Dan met his mother in 2016. It is not possible for Dan to have blamed it on Gavin. The most plausible reason for this lie is that Gavin wants to blame Dan for anything and everything that has gone wrong so that he has a legit motive for the killings. If Dan does not come out looking too bad, then Gavin will have to face the sole responsibility of his actions. He also says that he had been the focus of all the abuse in the house, and his brothers were spared. Another primary angle to this is that Gavin has been the primary caretaker of Jameson since the day he was born. The three-year-old had started calling Gavin Daddy. This is the same child he will proceed to kill with his own hands. Um, how long have you been at uh, your girlfriend's house? A couple of days. Okay. And tell us about how you ended up there. Well, she asked me to come over because she just needed help with school, and she's been having a very hard time with her mother's staff that happened last month. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to come over, and I asked my stepdad, well, my mom, Left go over there and they said, yeah, just be back by Tuesday. And that not been there since. Okay. Have you been doing your schooling? Yeah, just that we've been helping each other with school. Okay. So you've been doing virtual learning or school?
Schoology or whatever it's called. Schoology. Schoology. I don't know. Yeah, however you say it. You've been doing that at... Um, oh, house, yes. Okay. And what's your girlfriend's name? With that, uh, Rebecca. Rebecca. Uh, Wava. Okay. What's it? W-A-L-K-E-R. Okay. Um, how long have y'all been together? Since March 28th. Oh, this year? Mm-hmm. So... Well, Almost nine months. Yeah, just about nine months. months. How do you all communicate? Talking. Uh, do you mean to yeah, social media? Yeah, yeah, on social media. We usually talk through Instagram and Skype. Skype? Mostly Skype. That's yeah, how we kicked, it, we kicked it off and on Snapchat. Then we just went to Skype and Instagram. Okay. The detectives have planned the flow of their interrogations really well. So far, they have not confronted Gavin, but instead have asked questions about events that are loosely related to the murders, like how he ended up at Rebecca's home. But Gavin seems to be taking this as an opportunity to lay his groundwork for his lies. Here, he claims that he had not been in the house altogether when the murders took place. But the more interesting aspect is how the timeline of the events that occur is more in tune with stressful events that happen in Rebecca's life than in Gavin's. Dan had been a part of the family since 2016, but Gavin says he was not abused until April 2020. He and Rebecca started dating in March 2020. Matters escalated the most when Rebecca's mother died. The times when Gavin has been triggered are the same times when Rebecca is surrounded by stressful situations. Gavin, here's the thing. Um, like I said, we're, we have investigators up there at, at your house, okay? Yes, sir. And we talked to you up there and said you're, they're, your family, some of your family members are deceased, okay? You know what that means, they're dead, right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of... A lot of evidence in this case. I think you mentioned when we were up the road there that you watch a lot of these shows and you see how a lot of this stuff goes. So you know what what we can do as cops yeah. to try to figure out how things happen, right? Yes, sir. So. so obviously, um, with something serious like this, with a bunch of yeah, I, I understand your point. Dead people in the house. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you're gone, and we find you at your girlfriend's house. We find your girlfriend and talk to your girlfriend, and your girlfriend's she's coming off on everything, okay? She's telling us everything that you've told her about what happened at your house, okay? Yes, sir. So what we're wanting is to get the truth from you about what happened at your house and how your family ended up dead, okay? Yes, sir. We we want the truth from you, okay? I know I to like I lied to cop anyways. Yeah. Because I've been around them all my life. Yeah. So we we just want the truth from you, okay? We just want to kind of know what was going through your head when everything happened, okay? Yes. So can you can you tell us what happened? Well, after I, I told you the truth and all that, a um, couple of days ago, before all this happened, I didn't know of. Um, me and my mom was cooking, and I told her, well, I tried to open up to her, and she just said I faked it all because I'm currently depressed. Faked all what? Saying I fake cut myself, which I haven't cut myself yet, uh, for a couple months. Okay. And you can't fake cutting yourself. Right. And she said I was faking all this, and I was just one attention. And then, uh, then I overhauled it, and he helped me way bad. Dan overheard it? Yeah. And now that night he helped me way bad. How did he hurt you? He hit me down now. Down where? Your private area? Yeah. Okay. okay, what do you call that? I don't say pants. I say that D word. That's what, whatever word you use or fine. I don't want to disrespect y'all. Uh, you're not going to disrespect <laughs> me, buddy. I heard it all. No, I probably said it all, too. <laughs> so. Everybody says it all. Yeah. So what do you call that word down there? Dick. Your dick? Yeah. He hit you in your dick? Yeah. How do he hit you in your dick? He grabbed me on a hill and he punched me white. Um, he hit me white in the dick when he grabbed me in the shoulder. Okay. Now, how, did he do that one time or more than one he, time? He's he done it a lot of times. Okay. Okay. Was that, are you talking about he did that a lot of times that night or he did it a lot of times like He that did before? it in the past before okay. and he did it a couple nights ago. Okay. How many times did he hit you a couple nights ago? He hit me two times in the dick and he punched me in the gut. Okay. I don't have that mark on that because it's a wet mark. Okay. Now, so this is your stepdad? Mm hmm Okay. And what happened after that? I just, I went to bed and I just fell asleep crying in pain. Okay. And then the next day, uh, Thursday, 
Thursday, Friday. Yeah, Thursday. Uh, I asked my mom, can I go to Rebecca's hangout if I help her? What she's been going to do and all that. She says, sure. Yeah, you can go as long as you do your school. And I left that day. And I haven't seen them since. As soon as the detectives confront Gavin and make it obvious they do not believe his lies, he starts showing signs of nervousness again. You can see that the moment that the detective starts questioning him again and rejects his claim, his legs start to shake. They mention their interaction with Rebecca again because hearing Rebecca's name always manages to get more facts than lies from him. He knows that she is the only other person who knows all the details of the plan, so by lying, he is essentially trying to straighten his story. Once he opens up, he will try to find other ways of justifying his actions before he gives any details of the murders. The sexual abuse angle indicates that he is trying to make Dan look as bad as possible. Sexual abuse is a very strong stressor and will allow Gavin to justify his crimes to some extent. He has also already seen that speaking about how he suffered physical and verbal abuse is not getting him the level of sympathy that he was hoping to get. He also says that his mother Risa was entirely ignorant and told him he had been faking it. This could explain why he also killed his mother. He despises the fact that his own mother took Dan's side instead of his. And though the detectives thought that Gavin would confess, he immediately turns his story around and claims again that he was not present at home at the time of the murders. Because I know for a fact my mom, uh, she talked to me about it. She has a couple of people that wants to kill her. So I, God knows reasons, I don't know why, because she never did anything wrong. Well, Gavin, what we're getting at is we talked to Rebecca, and yeah. you told Rebecca everything you did. Yes, sir. Okay. So Rebecca has told one of our detectives what you told her. So we know what happened. Yes, and what I want you to do, I just want you to be honest with us, okay? <clears throat> About what you did, what happened to your family, okay? And it's important that we understand why, why people do things, why you would do something like this, okay? Because we understand... We, we kind of see the picture, but it, we need to understand from your your point of view, from your from your words, from your mindset, what was going on yeah. that caused you to do those things, okay? And you need to tell us what you did, okay? Yeah. Because uh, he's, Dan has been trying to kill me the past few days. Okay. Like, he would, he cut me right there. Okay. With a knife. Okay. Yeah, and, then, and he's been just trying to kill me while he can. Okay. And I've been able to sleep well until I got to my girlfriend's. I've been just sleep on the phone. She's been helping me with them. Okay. The story, according to Gavin so far, has been that he did not kill his family. He was simply not at home when this happened. He had been staying at Rebecca's home since before the murders. He has been sexually, physically, and verbally abused by Dan. Dan wanted to kill him. He was solely responsible for his baby brother, Jameson. He admits he has been hurting himself and that he had an ignorant mother. And now, finally, that there were people who wanted to kill her mother. As we progress into the interrogation, it will be hard to keep up with Gavin's versions of events, so we'll try to sum up the points in this manner when a whole new story is envisioned. Well, you told your girlfriend that you killed your family, okay? And finally, Gavin has slipped and confessed. The detectives outrightly state that they know Gavin killed his family instead of softly stating it by asking him to tell them the truth. They have realized by now that asking politely and not confronting him only enables him to lie more. They no longer have the patience to facilitate his lies. Can you regret it? No. Well, you need to tell us what you did and why you did it. That's what we want to know, okay? That day, um, that morning, Dan, he put his gun to my head. Cut. And tried to make me do what, it's gay, what he tried to make me do. He tried to make me shoot him. Dan did? Yeah, because mom wanted to do it, mom. Huh? I said because mom wouldn't do it anymore. What? Mom wouldn't do it anymore? Yeah, I know with that. And he tried to do that and I lost it. Okay. Who all was there when that happened? Yeah, okay. Okay. What room were y'all in? Dale Wim. Huh? Dale Wim. Who's room? My mom and dad's room. 
the mom and dad's room. Okay. Um, what day was this? Wednesday, Thursday. It's one of those two days. Okay. What time of day was it? I don't know. I didn't pay attention. Was it daytime, nighttime? Daytime. Just daytime? Okay. Was it before you ate lunch or after you ate lunch, or you remember? I didn't eat at all that day. You didn't eat at all that day? Even after confessing to his crimes, Gavin seems more interested in building up to the motive than detailing the events. He has now doubled down on the assault charges against Dan. Detectives keep an open mind and explore what Gavin has to say and don't strike it down because they believe that if he starts speaking, then he will answer more of their questions. Apart from that, his motive, extent of involvement in the crime, and all the minute details add up to decide the culpability of Gavin in court. Well, well tell us what happened when you lost it. I lost him and I accidentally shot him. Huh? I accidentally shot him. You accidentally shot him? All of them. All of them? How'd you accidentally shoot him, buddy? I didn't realize what I was doing. What do you mean by that? It's, I wasn't thinking straight. Okay. And I still grabbed that gun and I pulled the trigger. Okay. Who'd you shoot first? Dan. Huh? Dan. Okay. You shot Dan first? It's okay, buddy. We're going to work through this, okay? <clears throat> So you shot Dan first. Where did you shoot Dan? In the head. In the head? No, he quit. Okay. I know, man, but that happened. What happened after that? I shot him all in the head after. You shot who all in the head after? Mom, then Gage, then Jay. Mom, then Gage, then Jameson. Jameson? Okay. Where were they all? Tell me. Tell us about where everybody was whenever you shot Blonde them. Blonde was in bed when I shot them. Were they asleep or? Asleep. Yeah. And, and I got to with that uh, Gage. I walked Gemma, my dog, and I came back in. Gage was trying to kill Jay. He put the knife to his James's during chest and I shot Gage on the head. Why was he doing that? Because James wanted to shut up. He was screaming. Okay. While Gavin has now openly confessed to shooting his family members, he's still trying to find answers that will provide him with a better motive. He then tried to frame George for killing Jameson, but the detectives can see many loose ends in that story. From the start, they did not pay a lot of heed to it. It is also noteworthy that he says as he started with the killings, he and his girlfriend Rebecca were on a video call. All the murders took place while she is still on call. So you you shot uh, you shot mom and Dan in, in the bed. Yes. Where was everybody else when you shot them? Gage was, uh, if I shot Gage, he went into the room and I shot him right there. Okay. And I had to kill Jay because Gage slit his throat right here. Gage slit his throat? And not his own throat, but he slit James's throat right there. Why did Gage slit James's throat? Because he kept on screaming. James kept on screaming, he won't calm down. Was Gage with you when you did all this, or did he see all this? Uh, he didn't see any of it. Then why would he slit? He hauled it. He hauled the gunshots, but... And James just started screaming real loud, like he wanted to calm down, and Gage couldn't take it, and he put a knife to James and started trying to slit it, and I shot Gage right there. Because I put, I told that baby that I would protect him since it won. I promised him. So you shot, where did you shoot Gage? Head. Okay, where in the house were you when you shot him? In the room. Hmm? In the room. In whose room? Mom and Ben's. Okay. Was he... Sitting, standing, laying standing. On, when you shot him, when you shot Gage. Yes. And Mom and Dan were laying in bed. Mm -hmm. What about Jameson? Where was Jameson when you shot him? He was in his own room, mine and his room. Okay. Well, Why did you shoot Jameson? Because he was bleeding from my hell. Like, you can't save someone if you slit someone's throat. Okay. I didn't like to, but I didn't like seeing him in pain. 
Okay. Did you cut Jameson's throat? No, Gage did before I shot Gage. As Gavin describes the scene, things are definitely not adding up. According to him, he first shot Dan and Risa in their room while they were asleep. Then he video calls Rebecca and takes his dog, Gemma, for a walk. When he comes back, he sees Gage trying to slit Jameson's throat in Gavin's room, and in panic, he shoots Gage. Seeing Jameson in pain, he shoots the toddler as well. What doesn't add up here is how Gage's body ends up in Reese's room when he's shot in Gavin's room. Until his lie is caught, he only tries to tie up the loose ends to his story. This is an attempt to link Gage to Jameson's injury on the neck inflicted by Gavin. Well, here's the thing, um, Gavin. So with the knife, so we have detectives that are up at your house right now collecting everything. You said you watch those shows when you're out right there. You watch those shows, you know we're going to do the DNA testing and all that on there. Yes, sir. Um, if your DNA is going to be on the, on the handle that knife, yes, sir. that's something we need to know. I just want to make sure we're getting the truth from you, okay? Yeah, after I kill Gage, I tuck, I tuck the knife and I'll put it back, I'll put it on the shelf in the hallway. Okay. That's the last time I touched that knife. Well, Gavin, I think I think what we're well, getting at, I don't think Gavin, I mean, I don't think uh, Gage cut Jameson's throat. I think you did. Well, as after I shot Gage, Gage shot the knife. I picked up the knife and I put it on the hallway okay. shelf. And I, what, what, I, what I think, the reason I think that is because I think that um, that's what you feel the most bad about. What you did, I, I, I mean, I understand. I, I think you probably feel bad about all of it. I feel very bad for Cameron James and too. Yeah, I mean, but I think that that's probably the thing that's got you the most tore up over all this is that you killed that baby. That's it. And I, I don't think that Gage, the, the story, the, everything's making sense, but the part where you're saying that um, Gage cut Jameson's throat, and then you shot Jameson while he was standing, that doesn't make sense. No, because Jameson was standing. He was right beside my bed okay. when I shot him. And that Gage just heard the crying and cut Jameson's throat, and then you came in and killed Gage and killed I, Jameson. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that part's not making a whole lot of sense. Does that make does that? I might have messed up though. I'm not thinking straight. At the crime scene, a knife was also found, and though initially Gavin says that Gage is the one who used it, the detectives do not believe that. From the minute Gavin walks into the interrogation room, he's tried to conceal the truth. He gets comfortable when narrating his story, and recites it as if he has practiced it a lot. And when he's confronted with facts that he does not know have been shared with the interrogators, he starts to visibly get nervous. They're very quick to dismiss the blame that he's putting on Gage, and once again ask him to tell the truth. Detectives have also realized that though Gavin tries to justify the whole crime, he genuinely seems to be guilty about killing Jameson. That is the time when he gets most fidgety, which indicates him being nervous. By bringing up Jameson, detectives are trying to appeal to his emotional and more empathetic side. The story where he blames Gage for the murder of Jameson allows Gavin to do three of the following things. Firstly, he says he accidentally shot Gage, but only to defend Jameson. Second, he only killed Jameson as an act of mercy. And thirdly, Gage is dead, so even if Gavin makes certain allegations against him, he cannot defend himself in court. I understand. And I understand you probably feel bad about all this. Okay, but well, we, we just don't want... Um, we just want to make sure we, we fill in the whole complete picture. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And that part about you saying that Gage slit the back of throat after you killed your mom and your stepdad, and then you killed... I killed mom, Dan, Mom, Gage, and Jay. Yeah, and then, but the, the whole part about Gage cutting the baby's throat doesn't make sense. I got it all mixed up, I'm sorry. What did you get mixed up about? The knife and the, the knife part. Okay, well tell us about that. After I killed Gage, I had a knife in my hands, but I couldn't do it. So I put a knife on the shelf and I shot Jay. Never got by this to happen. 
What did you get the knife out for? I used it for wood. Okay. Because it's, it's a dollar knife and we used it to cut pieces of wood, like tiny pieces off. Mm-hmm. That's what I've been using it for. Where'd you get the knife from? Uh, the kitchen. Like in a drawer or is there like a holder for it? A holder. One of those pull out kind of deal. It was in the kitchen? Where was it in the kitchen? What was it near? Uh, it's in that back uh, kitchen set auto where you just pull it out and you put it back in. You slide that in. Okay. So what did you, what were you going to use the knife for that day? I was going to hurt myself with it. I thought we were going to what I did, but probably could What is it? I'm sorry. I said... I was going to use it on myself. I don't know that's what I did to everybody. Okay. But I changed my mind. Okay. So did you cut Jameson's throat? No. Okay. So did Jameson's throat get cut? Okay. I got messed up. I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, I mean, if if, if Jameson has a cut on his throat, it'll, our investigators will find it up there. I know. I mean, he... He had a little tiny cut, but that was a couple of days ago, like before all this happened. Because what me and him was playing, and he cut the edge of his neck off of one of the toys. Okay. So, and I totally got him. The detectives realize that Jameson is a trigger point for Gavin. He has a deep-rooted detest for father figures. His own father was out of the picture, and he despised Dan. The fact that Jameson used to call Gavin daddy is more personal. Everyone who knows Gavin personally knows how well he took care of baby Jameson, almost drawing parallels to the father figures he had versus the ones he truly wanted in his own life. This is why he tried to be more responsible towards his little brother. However, he has now shot him, and it makes sense why he carries the most remorse for him. Hence, they do not try to frame questions directly about Jameson initially, because this may cause Gavin to emotionally close off and discontinue being cooperative towards the investigation. Instead, they ask about the purpose of the knife. Gavin realizes that blaming Gage will not work, so he says that Jameson had gotten injured a few days prior while playing with a toy. He is just trying to justify the wounds on Jameson's neck. So I just want to make sure I'm clear. The Gage, see, Gage did not cut Jameson's throat. Gage did not cut Jameson's throat. I'm sorry. Well, why did you tell us that to begin with? I got messed up. Okay. No, I am way sorry. I know you are, buddy. So what made you want to do all this? The abuse, no, no, I couldn't tell him anymore. Because he's, Dan, he's been trying to kill me constantly. What do you mean by that? Like, I sent like that guy photos of bruises, like, I had a, I know, I had a big jump bruise that big from Dan. Mm-hmm. And it was swelled up so bad, and Dan used to hit me in the back all the time and all that. Mm -hmm. Just for fun, because he would giggle. And my back would lock up on oh, I could barely move. Okay. And mom didn't even do anything about it. But she saw Dan abuse me, and Dan has punched me. He punched me right here, right there. And I had a black eye, and he hit me again on the other side. I had two other black eyes. Okay. Has CPS ever been to your house? You know who CPS is? What CPS? Child Protective Service. <laughs> no, but I've been trying to get a hold of them, but I can't. Okay. Did anybody at the school ever notice any of this stuff? Mm-mm. It happened when all this COVID, I had to stay home kind of deal. Okay. Did, uh, did the police ever get called to your house for anything? No, not that I know of. Okay. Whenever detectives try to venture into Gavin's motive, he always takes this as an opportunity to blame Dan. He believes that if he has a good enough motive, in this case the sexual and physical assault inflicted by Dan, then he can justify his horrendous acts. Had you been in contact with any like CPS workers or law enforcement or anything like that? I called CPS a couple times before because I, I would sneak a device from my neighbor like they let me call them. You would sneak and do what? I sneak a phone and try to contact CPS. They won't ever pick up. Okay. But you were in contact with deputies and 
That, no. I never thought about calling the police. I always thought about calling CPS. Well, how come you didn't call the police or tell CPS about this if you came in contact with Ray? If I happened? came in contact with CPS, I would have told him that. Okay. What about law enforcement? Were you familiar with any of the deputies that we have working down here? No, I'm familiar to the one up in Jackson County, but not the ones down okay. there. Well, how come you didn't tell anybody about this, Scout? I was just scared. Okay. Because Dan Dunn said if I ever told anyone that he would physically help me so bad that I'd be in the hospital. Okay. Here, Gavin intentionally lies about being in contact with Child Protective Services because he seems to have already gone over all the elements that will make his story plausible. In cases of child abuse, the first respondents are always the CPS. If Gavin was truly facing a lot of abuse and his first course of action was contacting the CPS, then he could justify his acts more. If he had not made an effort to even contact them, then that would make him look more guilty. Well, I understand that your anger towards Dan, okay? And I understand, you know, how your mom kind of wasn't, um, how did you, she, you say she take up for Dan or? She would take up for Dan. Like, she wouldn't try to stop him at that. She would just sit down and watch. Okay. Well, why did you kill your little brothers? Because Gage was in it, too. He was... He would help Dan help me. Like Gage would help me too, and all that. Well, why'd you kill James? I don't know. Because no one would take care of him. Because, like I said, I've been taking care of him since day one. He's been calling me daddy. Okay. Well, why'd you kill your mom? Because she's been trying to get rid of me. We mean get rid of it. Giant. They have been trying, well, mom, she's been trying to get me in jail and all that. Because I went away because of the abuse. I went away to my grandpa's one year deputy, so familiar with them. And they put a restraint on against him because all he ever did was protect me. Who's the grandpa? Grandpa. What's great grandpa? grandfather. What's your great grandfather's name? Buster Saunders. Buster Saunders. Okay. Did he know what was going on with all the babies? I know, not that, but he knew what was going on about the baby situation. What about the baby situation? Me taking care of James in 24-7, feeding him, buying him stuff. Like, when I got money, I went buy all myself, I buy on James. And... Okay. Well, why'd you kill Dan? Because all the Story number two. The facts of the events have changed significantly within a few minutes. Now, as his story goes, the following is what happened. He did kill his family. He only did it because of the abuse he faced from Dan. Encouraged by Dan, Gage too abused him physically. He did not plan to shoot Gage, but he had to as he was trying to slit Jameson's throat. But later, he changes the story, saying Jameson got a neck injury a few days prior while playing with a sharp toy. Firstly, he says he did not shoot Jameson. Later, he says he shot Jameson because he was in pain. He called Child Protective Services, but they did not pick up. Gavin himself cannot keep up with his lies. He uses one story after another, looking at them like strategies and not facts. When one strategy does not work, he comes up with a new one. The fact that he blames Gage for sexual assault suggests that Gavin understands that his strategy to blame the entire motive on Dan does not seem to be working. For him to be innocent, it is necessary he looks cornered in his own home, the recipient of all the hate and violence on his own. Like I said, I get that. I just don't understand. I'm trying to understand why you killed Gage and Jameson. I mean, Gage, he... Dan would hold me against my will, like against the one, and he would let Gage punch me. What? I don't know. That's why I want to know. When did that happen last? Ever since Dan started up to me. Okay. Now, how long has that been? Since March? No, April. Dan started up to me ever since this COVID thing started. Like physically abusive? Physically abusive and emotionally. Like so bad I would end up slicing myself. Dan badly. I know earlier you said Dan tried to make you his bed. Yeah. Has he done that before? He tried, but I wouldn't do it. Have you ever done it? Mm -hmm. Ever since he's ever tried to get you to? No.
Uh, Had he ever tried to... Uh, he has got sex with Todd Smith. Huh? He has got sex with Todd Smith. Like I told you guys, try to make me sex him, and he has whipped a couple of my shots off. How? Let's run up by me again. I said he has got sex with Todd Smith. Like, towards you? Yeah, like trying to make me sex this day. Yeah. And he has whipped a couple of my shots off. Like, they would be tall up kind of deal. Mm-hmm. When did, how long has that been going on? Well, a couple of my shots got wet from him, so, um, a couple months ago. Like a month or two. month or two? Mm-hmm. How many times did this happen? Three times. Three times? He tried to make me sick. Okay. Over how long a time span? Mm-hmm. Nothing from November, like from September to November. That. Because mom wanted to do him. Okay. And when was the most recent time that you did, that he tried to? November. Okay. I thought you said he made you try to the other day. Yeah, I'm saying November he tried to make me. Okay. Yeah, from September to November he tried to make me. Okay. When asked about the abuse that Dan inflicted on him, Gavin mentions the physical and emotional abuse, but does not start with the sexual abuse. For anyone's abuse would be the first thing they mention, as it is more traumatizing. But Gavin only adds assault as an accessory that will make Dan look worse than before. Gavin is unable to keep up with the story that he's been knitting. Well, how long have you been planning to kill your family? A couple of days before it all happened. A couple of days before? Before it all happened. Did you tell anybody about what you were planning to do? Well, I told with Becca, but I was glad that we doing that. You told Rebecca what? I, I told Rebecca about we could I was doing all this. Okay. Did you tell her before you did it? Mm-hmm. How did you tell her? I told her I was going to kill them. Okay. How did you tell her? Like, were you telling her in person, on the phone, or on mes- messages, or what? Uh, it was on messages. What kind of messages? Google. Huh? Google. Google? Google. Perhaps the most significant thing Gavin accidentally confesses to here is the involvement of Rebecca. First, when asked how long he'd been planning to do this, he said he had told Rebecca a few days prior. This means that the murders were premeditated and did not happen on impulse, which will later help during their sentencing for first-degree murders. Secondly, the facts made clear from Gavin's statement, Rebecca's statements, and the digital records from the phone is enough to prove that Rebecca was in fact the accomplice. Are you for sure you didn't cut nobody? Yeah, for sure I didn't cut anybody. You just shot everybody? Yeah. Well, James has cut on his throat. It's because me and him was playing with toys. Okay. And James didn't pay attention. And when his toys had shot up and it slit his throat open. Okay. Yeah. But not the. Can you show me where, where you shot him up? I shot Dan right there. In the temple? Somewhere on the side of his head. I don't remember. It's not lower than, it's not lower than his eye. What is it? I shot him somewhere over here. Okay, like right around this area. Yeah. Where did you shoot your mom out? Back of the head. The back. Mm-hmm. Did she wake up whenever you shot Dan? Mm-hmm. What about Cage? Where did you shoot him out? Back of the head. What about Jameson? Same area. Were they? Are they all in bed when you did this, or? No. Mom and Dan was in bed. Mm-hmm. Gage was, Gage went into their room. I shot oh. him in the back of bed. Jameson was in my room. Well, in mine and his. Because you take care of Jameson all the time? All the time. When you shot Dan and your mother, did uh, Gage wake up and come to that room because maybe... No, he, he was awake. Oh, he heard the shots, but he didn't know what it was. Okay. So you're in their room after you shoot Dan and your mother. Gage walks in. Gage walks in, I shot him. In the back of the head. In the back of the head. How did you manage to shoot him in the back of the head? Because, I mean, I'm assuming he walked in and seen you. He, he didn't see me white in the room because after that, Jameson needed his strength, and I gave him his strength. Gage went to check out what that was. He went to the room, saw them, and I shot him. Did you come up, like, behind him? I came up behind him. Okay. So while you were giving Jameson a drink... You went back to your mother, your mom and dad, your mom and dad's room. And shot Gage. Yeah, Gage was in there looking, I guess, to see what it was, and he shot him in the back of the head. I don't know. 
So J- Jameson is shot in your room, or in mine, his one, basically his one. Yeah. I mean, I was. Which, so, did he go back to sleep after you gave him a drink, or was he up for the evening? He was up. Was he in his bed, under the bed? He was on the. He was walking around on the ground. Oh, he's walking around. Right okay. I mean, I would grab shit them. And while he was walking around, you just shot him in the back of the head as well. Where did his body land, do you remember? I didn't pay attention. I didn't pay attention at all. Just had to open those words and I panicked. Not one of Did you immediately leave the house after you? I wanted to kill myself. I felt like I did. Mm. But I didn't do it because my dad. I didn't kill myself because I promised way back I wouldn't. The detectives are giving him chance after chance so he can confess, but each time he comes up with a new story, he's still trying to push the story where he says that Jameson has cuts on the neck from playing because he still cannot accept what he's done. I just want to make sure I understand. Where at on everybody's, like, where did you shoot Dan on his body? His head. The front or the back? Uh, side. The side? Side. Mom, back. Everybody else, back of the head. So you shot Dan on the side of the head. You remember which side? No, I did not. Okay. I don't know. So. You shot mom in the back of the head? Mm-hmm. What was mom doing when you shot her? Sleep. She was asleep on her, was she laying on her front? Or? Oh, yeah, she was laying on the front. How was Dan laying? On, on his side. On his side. What about Gavin? Uh, Gage. Gage, I'm sorry. Uh, he was standing up. Standing when, up? When I shot him. What was he doing? Checking on the gun sound. At the gun sound. Okay. So where was he standing? At the door. Huh? At the door. At the door. Um, how far away were you from Dan and your mom when you shot him? At the end of the bed. Okay. So you're at the end of the bed. It's like the... how How's the bed set up? Is it like against it's the It's like this table. It's straight. The okay. bed's straight. Okay. I just like that. So were you at like their feet or their the feet. their head or feet? Okay. And where was Gage? Uh, he was at the door. Okay. And then where were you standing when you shot Gage? Behind. Huh? Behind him. Behind him. So he walked into the room. Yeah, and I shot him. You shot him in the back of the head. Okay. Did he see you? Mm-mm. He never saw you. Mm-hmm. Tell him what you told me when he was gone. Like, you know, you had walked in to give him Jameson's room? Yeah. yeah. He, he walked to give Jameson a drink. By that time, Gage walked in the room to see what happened. And you went up behind him and shot him? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Did, you, did you only shoot everyone just once? Or was there multiple times? Or? I shot everybody once. Once? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you shot Jameson where at on his head? Back of the head. Okay. Where was he? Uh, the side of my bed. Beside your bed? Yeah, because my bed is in front of the hallway. If you walk through that, you'll see it. And his bed's in the side of him, his crib. Okay. I just... So was he, was he out of his crib or was... He, he was walking around on the ground. Okay. And you shot him in the back of the head? Okay. So did you cut... Did... did no. Uh, James's throat get cut at all? No, not from the knife. Me, like I said, me and James was playing with a toy, okay. and when his toys were sharp, when the edges of it, it sliced and started to hit. Okay. When was that? A couple of days ago. Okay. This is by far the most accurate and detailed description that Gavin gives of his crimes. For the first time, when asked, he does not try to justify the murders by blaming Dan, but rather just states the events as they occurred. However, this guilt regarding Jameson has not allowed him to talk about him yet. In his case, he's still trying to come out looking better, but the officers are able to see through that. So what time of day was this? It was daytime, but I don't know what time. Was it like first thing in the morning, or was it later in the day? Later in the day, that's all I could say. Why were they sleeping? That's all they do. Is they sleep during the day and stayed up all night. Do they work anywhere? Mm-mm, no. Dan hasn't walked for a couple of years. Mom hasn't walked since Dan and her got together. You ever seen him use like alcohol or drugs or anything like that? Dan, he 
if you check the fridge, is alcohol now? He used to drink it all the time. Was he able to get drunk? Yeah. No drugs, though? No drugs, though. Do you drink or use drugs? No, so. I'm not into that stuff. From the way Gavin speaks, presents himself, and how he thinks, he draws a lot of parallels with a person who has borderline personality disorder. It is a personality disorder listed under DSM-5 and ICD-10 that severely impacts a person's ability to regulate their emotions. This loss of emotional control can increase impulsive actions, affect how a person feels about themselves, and negatively impact their relationships with others. If you think about the day of events and how Gavin acts in the interrogation, you will realize that his motives can be traced back to these personality traits. For a person to be diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, they need to meet five of the following nine criteria, while Gavin visibly showed six. This would explain the illogical parts of the crimes he committed. According to the research available on BPD, people who have been exposed to a somewhat traumatic childhood are most at risk of developing such a disorder. Though Gavin's crimes cannot be justified, nothing in life is ever black and white. The same is true in this case. Though there is no evidence that Gavin was sexually abused, he was in fact verbally, emotionally, and physically abused. He states that Dan regularly consumed copious amounts of alcohol, and both Dan and Risa were not working at that moment. There were three children in the house, and the only source of income was a disability check that Dan used to receive on a monthly basis. Gavin was given more responsibilities than a normal 16-year-old, and was neglected in many ways. Even if that was not the motive, this surely contributed to the events of the case. Now, we've been talking to our other detectives up at your, your house, mm -hmm. that happened, and they told us that uh, Jameson's body is kind of, you know, oddly placed. It seemed like, did you, did you maybe move his body by chance? No, I shot him. I didn't pay attention to where he fell. Did you maybe cover him up with anything? No. Because they're saying that there's some sort of like blanket over him. I wouldn't have seen how that would get there unless maybe you placed it on it. I might have actually moved the blanket. It's okay if you did. We, we were just curious how it got there. Do you, do you think you did? I have probably accidentally moved it. How would you actually? It was on the edge of the bed, like half of the blanket, mm -hmm. and if you touch it, it'll fall over. Okay. So, so I might have actually touched it and fell on top of them. Okay. And they say, you know, half this, it seems like, you know, the upper part of his body is kind of underneath the bed, or... As the interrogation continues, officers at the crime scene inform the interrogators about an odd observation. They notice that Jameson was lying half under the mattress of his crib, and his face was covered with a blanket. Though Gavin says that it may have happened accidentally, that is not the case. The reason Jameson was under the mattress is because after Gavin unsuccessfully tried to slit his throat, he got scared and tried to hide under the mattress. But Gavin returned before Jameson could completely hide and shot him. In many violent crimes, it has been observed by behavior analysts that a criminal will often cover the face of a victim when they are truly remorseful. Gavin only did this for Jameson and no one else in the family. He was his primary caregiver, and it seems he abundantly regretted his actions. Also, our detective that talked to uh, Rebecca. Yes. Now, she told us about the bruising and the physical abuse, but she didn't mention anything about um, Dan trying to suck your dick. I know. I'm trying to make you suck his dick. I'm sorry. I keep saying I don't that. Well, she, she's not mentioning anything about that. Um, and if that's, listen, if he was abusing you, I believe that part of it because you said that there were there were bruises and you sent pictures, but the sexual part of it, I'm not. That's just not making a whole lot of sense, okay? And that's not jiving with what Rebecca's told us. So if you, if you're making that part of it up, oh. I, I can we we I, we can work with that. I just need to know that you're telling me the whole truth. I believe the stuff about the physical abuse. I am telling the whole truth because I told with that or what Dan tried to do trying to make me suspicious. Well, Rebecca's not saying that that. that you told her that. And if, if it didn't happen, it didn't happen. Um, I, b I believe the physical stuff. I, I believe the, the bruising and him being an asshole and all that. But it, but if he didn't try to make you suck his dick. I mean, if I had just whip shots and all that, I would show you, but I don't because I have to okay. damn whip them. Well, I, she's not saying that you told her any of that stuff, okay? That's what I told her. Huh? I said, that's what I told her. Well, if that stuff didn't happen, okay? 
I know, but I said that. The utter shock on Gavin's face is the most evident thing in the room upon hearing that. This implies either of the two things. Firstly, Gavin and Rebecca did not get their story straight, and he did not get to brief her about the false events he added to his story. Secondly, if they had discussed it, Rebecca threw him under the bus and did keep to the story that they had discussed. With the look on Gavin's face, the latter seems more plausible. Is there anything else you can think of? What? What happens to a dog? Well, my dog. Your dog? I would imagine they'll either have to give it to a family member, call a humane officer, or something like that. But the, the dog will be taken care of. It just won't be left alone. I mean, she's full blood a great day. And right. A big dog. That's a big dog to take care of. I mean, like, yeah, damn Baja, but ever since he bought, he's just been making me take care of this other dog in person I've been to walk off. Okay. I mean, what's the point of getting a family dog if you're just gonna make one person take care of her? Right. As the interrogation has come to an end, Gavin feels that he has still not stressed the motive, i.e. Dan's fault, enough. So he asks about the whereabouts of their family dog, Gemma. He again tries to paint Dan in an irresponsible light, saying that while Dan was the one who brought Gemma home, Gavin was the one made to look after her. It's astonishing to hear such care about a dog from Gavin given the horrors he inflicted on his own family. Though Gavin tries his best to conceal his true motives from different sources and some of his own accounts, the officers were able to draw out his true motive. The role of Rebecca in the interrogation is highly understated. It has been made clear that it was after discussing with Rebecca that Gavin decided to take such extreme measures. She had told Gavin that he should kill them before Dan kills him. The timing of finally taking a step in this horrid direction was very significant. It was a time period when Rebecca was in a bad emotional state in lieu of her mother's death. Both Gavin and Rebecca's parents did not allow them to meet each other as often and openly as they would have liked. This is mostly because both parents thought that the teens were a bad influence on each other. There is no doubt that Gavin faced abuse too, and that was most likely the reason he had so much built up frustration that he acted out this way. Timothy Saunders, Reese's father, also went on record and agreed that Dan used to bark orders at Gavin and that Gavin was the primary caregiver for Jameson. But he also said that Risa was an incredible mother who always prioritized her sons above everything. As for the physical evidence, there were some indications of abuse. There used to be a lock on the fridge at all times to stop Gage and Gavin from overeating. The reason for this was that the family was on a tight budget and the boys ate too much. But the defense argued that both parents were morbidly obese and surely the limited food budget was not the real issue. It was a tactic to gain more control. There are a lot of reasons for what happened in the end, though some may have contributed more to the events of this case than the others. The judge and the jury agreed that there was malice or premeditated intentions to conduct a crime when it came to Dan and Jameson. So both Gavin and Rebecca were charged with three counts of first degree murder, but the murder of Gage was considered situational. Gage was only killed because he happened to be in Reese's room. For Gage, both Gavin and Rebecca were charged with one count of second degree murder. Prosecutors asked Rebecca to give a statement against Gavin in exchange for a plea bargain where she would only be charged for being an accessory to first degree murder, which would amount to 10 years of prison in total. This was a much more lenient sentence. Without Rebecca, there was no provable motive. She was the primary witness. Gavin did not take the stand during the trial. He will now be eligible for parole on December 13, 2035. This truly was a horrible story of loss, lies, and manipulation. Gavin Smith, with the influence of Rebecca Walker, killed his whole family, including his baby brother, Jameson, whom he loved the most. In such cases, we're always left to wonder what could have been different so things wouldn't have ended in this manner. What are your opinions on whose fault it was, and what was the real motive of Gavin behind the murders? Leave us a comment with your thoughts and let us know what you think happened. If you have any such cases that you want us to cover, add them in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such content.